Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Before you continue this video, I'd like to tell you that the second volume of our art book, the book of Illustrated of Quran, can be ordered right now. You can support us by buying this book for your niece and nephew. Link in the description below. Assalamualaikum. The Prophet wasallam undertook a journey to Syria when he was around 9, 10, 11 years old. Uh, his uncle Abu Talib would go with the caravan. The Prophet wasallam said, who are you leaving me with? How can you leave me all alone here? He's a young child. And so Abu Talib uh, cried out of compassion and he decided to take the young boy along even though that was not the initial plan. And uh, they went to uh, the land of Syria. They would pass by the monastery of a monk by the name of Buhayra. There's a number of versions of the story. In one version, he invites them to the monastery. And in another version, he simply discusses with them uh, directly. In the end, he tells Abu Talib that this young boy that you have with you is going to be the prophet of the Arabs. Uh, I saw every single tree uh, prostrate, a spiritual prostration that he didn't, nobody else saw, but he saw. And I saw the cloud shelter him. And in another version, he sat under a tree and the monk said that the sign of the prophet would be that he would sit under uh, this tree. And he asked him, who is your father? And so Abu Talib said, I am his father. And the monk said, no, this is not possible. So Abu Talib said, I am actually his uncle. And so the monk said, yes, the prophet cannot have his father living. That is of the signs. The monk allegedly says, be careful because the Romans, in another version, the Jews are going to kill this lad if they get a hold of him, protect him, and he is going to be the leader of the Arabs. This story is problematic on many levels. First and foremost, the story mentions in one version that Abu Bakr was accompanying the Prophet ﷺ. And in another version it says that Bilal was the slave of the caravan. And this is simply historically impossible. Abu Bakr would have been too young. And there is no recorded friendship when the Prophet ﷺ was 10 years old. Additionally, Bilal has not yet been born, much less become a slave in Mecca when the Prophet ﷺ is 10 years old. Another problem with this story not that the process has been predicted in the previous scriptures, we know this, that he has been predicted. Had Buhaira actually said this to the Prophet in front of Abu Talib, the Quraysh would have known, and Abu Talib would have known. And many years later, the Prophet would have said, Oh my uncle, why are you doubting I'm a Prophet? Don't you remember when I was a teenager, such and such happened? Don't you remember that Buhaira said this when I was 10 years old? How can you doubt it now? And the Quraysh would have known of this uh, story as well. SubhanAllah, we need to be a little bit more careful in what we read in books and folklores and legends. Not everything is authentic. We find that indeed there is some problem even with the chain. There is some problem with the content. And that is why a lot of the, the classical and medieval scholars, they found the story problematic. For example, Imam al-Dhahabi said, Abu Bakr was only 10 at the time. And as for Bilal, he was purchased by Abu Bakr after the da'wah began, 30 years down the line, and he had not yet been born. And why would the trees shelter him when, according to the same report, the clouds were walking on top of him? And why don't we find that the Prophet reminded Abu Talib of this incident and the statement of the monk? And why didn't he mention this to the Quraysh when he began preaching his prophethood? And if this really had occurred, they would not have found his prophethood something strange and they would have welcomed it. If it had really occurred, then when Jibreel visited him in Ghari Hira, he would not have wondered who is this angel. And he would have welcomed it instead of running back to his wife in Khadija out of fear. End quote. Now, somebody can ask, what's the big deal? Why do you have to be so critical? To which the response comes, the stories of the seerah, by and large, have not been narrated with those same rigorous chains as the ahadith pertaining to halal and haram. And even Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he said, when it comes to halal and haram, we'll be very strict. When it comes to seerah, he went like this, no big deal, let it be. And this is true. Because many of the details of the seerah are mentioned in reports that are not 100% verifiable.
And so we know the details of the battle of Badr and the number of camels in the battle of Uhud and a specific fight in the battle of the Khandaq. Many of these stories are not narrated with those rigorous chains. And by and large, even in my narration of the seerah to you, I let these stories go by. No big deal. However, sometimes we have to stop it. Why and when? When the story raises problems. And this is one of those stories. Why does it raise problems? Because the primary problem really of this story is that many people who don't believe in our Prophet Muhammad they have to answer a very difficult question. Where did the Prophet get the idea of being a Prophet and the knowledge that he came with as a Prophet? And this is something that is a mu'jiza, a miracle. And I mentioned this many times previously, that our Prophet ﷺ did not know the stories of Isa and Musa. He never heard the name of Yunus. This not, it's not of the ancestry of the Arabs. What has he got to do with, this, with that branch of humanity? Neither is the concept of prophecy known to the Arabs. After the time of Ismail, two, three thousand years ago, the Arabs have never seen or heard of a prophet. And they never knew what is a prophet. So for the Prophet Muhammad to come and say, I am a prophet, he is bringing something novel for the Arabs of his time. And the Quran mentions this many verses. You didn't know what was Iman. You didn't know what was Wahi. You didn't know what were the, 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 the stories of the prophets of old. And for the longest time, the non-Muslims would say, he learned these stories in his journey to Syria. And this is an example here. One of the famous Orientalists of the last century, he goes, Buhaira fired up his imagination. He must have told him stories of Jesus Christ and Moses. And so the young lad came back and 30 years later, those stories are found in garbled form because they're not in the pure form of the Old and New Testament. The Islamic version is always different. And so apparently from this guy's perspective, he learned these stories and then he regurgitated them as an older man. And the response to this is that really without even you bringing in this, this tangent, the story doesn't make sense. Many of our classical scholars rejected it. And in my heart, I don't find this to be a comforting story. Imam al-Dhahabi said, I think the story is fabricated. And therefore, it is best to simply narrate it and point out that many of our classical scholars did not find the story acceptable.